Fizzbuzz. Now, Fizzbuzz is a very popular interview question or coding challenge. It's probably one of the most famous ones out there. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to tackle the problem. We're going to look at how to interpret the problem, how we can approach the problem, some things we should use in the C-sharp language to tackle the problem, and then we're going to code it, write it, and test it. So Fizzbuzz, what is this? What do we do? Well, the problem is write a program that prints the numbers from 1 to 100. But for multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number. For multiples of 5, we print buzz. However, if there are a multiple of 3 and 5, then print fizzbuzz. So a bit of trivia for you. It actually started off as a children's word game and you would have a group of children and they'd all take it in turns to go through the numbers and they'd have to say fizz in place of, you know, a number that's divisible by three and buzz for five. So, so basically it started off as a children's game and now it's a very popular programming challenge. So let's take a look at this. Like all my C-sharp coding challenges, it assumes you have some general knowledge of C-sharp. You don't have to be an expert, but I do have a full C-sharp course from absolute beginners on my profile. So I highly recommend you check that out before tackling these challenges. So let's get started. So I have a bit of a shell of an application here. I have our familiar main method here, and it's just calling another method called fizzbuzz. Now what I want to do is put all the logic right here. So what's the first thing it's asking us to do? Write a program that prints numbers from 1 to 100. Okay, so we need to do a loop of some sort. Now, um, the difference between a for loop and a while loop, or a for each loop, for example, we use a for loop when we know how many iterations we're going to do, just because it's a lot easier. We know how many iterations because it's from 1 to 100, so a for loop is really good for this. Now we want to begin this at number 1 because we're going from 1 to 100. So we're going to just declare a variable called x, initialize it to 1. And what's our condition? When do we escape out of the loop? What is the upper limit when the loop will quit out and carry on with the rest of the program? Well, when it reaches 100. So we can do less than 101 or less than or equal to 100. It doesn't really matter. And for every iteration of the loop, we want to increment our variable by 1. So now this loop is going to print our number 100 times. And we just need an x there. Everyone makes mistakes. So let's run the program now and make sure we're outputting the numbers from 1 to 100. So we're running the program. You can see it counts from 1 to 100. So that part is done. So now what else is it asking us to do? For multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number. And for multiples of 5, print buzz. Okay, so if a number is divisible perfectly by the number 3, we print fizz. So if, okay, well that sounds like a condition to me. So let's start with an if statement. Because we want to check if something is divisible by 3. So how do we check if a number is divisible by 3? Well, the easiest way to do that is to use the modulus operator, or the modulo operator. So that's this little percentage character here. And what that does, it gives us the remainder. So if we say, I don't know, 5 divided by 4, for example. Well, 5 divided by 4 is 1, then there's a remainder of 1. So if we say 5 mod 4, then it's 1, because it gives us the remainder. 4 goes into 5 one time with a remainder of 1. So modulus will give us the remainder. One more example, 8 modulo 4. 4 goes into 8 perfectly two times, so there's a remainder of 0. So how do we check if a number is perfectly divisible by another number? We use the modulo operator, and we check that the remainder is 0. So now we know that, we want to check if the current number, which is x, because this is the variable we set up in our loop, we want to check if x is perfectly divisible by 3. So we want to check if the remainder is 0. And then what do we want to do? We want to print fizz. So let's copy this, put that there, and put in fizz. So that looks pretty good. So what was the other requirement? 
Uh, for the, for multiples of five print buzz. Okay, no problem. Well, it sounds like we can use an else if statement here. So that's checking another condition. So if it's not divisible by three, then we can fall on to the next condition and check if it's divisible by five perfectly. And when we do that, we print buzz. So let's put buzz in here. And what is our last condition here? For numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5 print fizz buzz. Okay, well, it looks like we can do another else if statement. So if this is not true, this is not true, then let's check if this one's true. So now we want to do both things. So we take our first condition, checking if it's divisible by 3, but also checking if it's divisible by 5 perfectly. And we can use our little AND operator for this, which just means this in English. So if it's perfectly divisible by 3 and 5, then print fizz buzz. And the last thing we want to do, well, it doesn't really say anything else. We, I guess we want to print the number, which we're already doing down here. So the last thing we're going to do, so if, if this is false, this is false, this is false, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to execute this at the end here. So this is the last thing it will do if all of the others are false. So we're just going to print the number. So that looks to me like it might work. However, it's not going to work, and I'm going to show you why. So let's take a look at this. So I'm going to run the application. So you can see if I scroll up, we have fizz, which is the number three. Yes, five buzz, six fizz. So it looks pretty good. However, there's a bit of a problem here. 15 is divisible by 3 and 5. So why doesn't it say fizz buzz? Why does it say fizz? It's a bit weird, isn't it? What's going on here? Well, when x equals 15, we're on our 15th iteration of this loop. Uh, let's say this is 15. 15 is perfectly divisible by 3. Yes, it is. Let's print fizz. However, all of this is ignored, so this part is never getting reached, and that's a bit of a problem. So how do, how do we tackle that? How do we solve that for numbers which are divisible by 3 and 5? Well, the easiest way to do that is just move this up. Move it to the very first thing we want to do. So let's make that the very first condition here, and put 3 and 5 underneath. So the very first thing we're checking is is the current number divisible by 3 and 5? Then print fizz buzz. Then is it divisible by 3 and 5? And then if not, just print the number. And that should solve our problem. And that's quite a common problem for people who are, you know, first time tackling this uh, problem, the fizz buzz problem. So let's see if it worked. So let's run the application. Now that looks a little better, doesn't it? 1, 2, fizz, 4, buzz. Fizz, 7, 8, fizz, oh, it's really hard to say. But you can see now we're getting to 15, which is divisible by 3 and 5, it's saying fizz buzz. Uh, 30, fizz buzz, so it looks like it's working. So it looks like we've solved the problem. So this challenge, it might get disguised as something else. Maybe if it's divisible by 6, say, say Bill. If it's divisible by 8, then say Clinton. Uh, then 6 and 8, Bill Clinton. It, it doesn't really matter. It might, it might be disguised as anything else, but the roots of this problem is fizz buzz. And it, it started off as a children's game. And this is how to solve it. So very simple. And it's a very common interview question as well. And perhaps an assignment at university or school or beginner programmers might face this problem. So this is how to not only approach this problem, but also how to tackle the problem and execute it as well. So I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching.